So I've been thinking about getting a laser engraver slash cutter for a couple of months now. It's going back and forth on the two different options that they typically have out there for non-commercial use. The first one being a CO2 laser and um, they're typically more expensive. And the other side is a diode laser, which are less expensive. So figured, do I save up? for the CO2 laser and just go all in, or do I invest a little bit of money in a diode laser, see if I like it, and then maybe eventually upgrade later. As I was kind of figuring all of that out, a company reached out to me and asked if I wanted a free laser in exchange for making a video. So full transparency, all they did was send me the laser and a, a rotary tool for free in exchange for making a video. So here's what we're gonna do in the video. We're going to do a casual review. I'm gonna talk about the assembly, the software, the laser itself, and then we're just gonna engrave some stuff out. So I have a few things that I've already engraved, and at the end I'll kind of, I'll talk about the different ways that I plan on implementing or using this laser for future projects down the road. So before we go any further, I think it's worth talking about the two types of lasers that are out there in the market. There are diode lasers and CO2 lasers. With diode lasers, light is created by emitting a current through a semiconductor. These ones in particular are usually smaller, they're less expensive and lower voltage, and they're a good laser to start things off with. So if you have, like me, not really sure if you're going to use a laser engraver all that much, definitely take a look at diode lasers because they'll get the job done and they will uh, kind of open up that gate for you. CO2 lasers, on the other hand, use a carbon dioxide gas to generate an infrared light that's used for the laser. These ones specifically are more efficient, higher powered, and are going to be a little bit more expensive than the diode lasers. The CO2 lasers that I've seen typically come in kind of this large box where you can put um, the material that you're engraving or cutting inside, and it has an enclosure so you can shut the hood, and that hood too has a little camera which is used to help focus the laser and position your artwork on the material that you're engraving. All right, cool. So let's talk about the assembly for the laser that I received. As I was going through and putting this thing together, I was kind of comparing it to my experience when I was putting my CNC together back there. That probably took me a day and a half and then I got upgrades and that was even longer. This one, this laser engraver, probably took me about an hour start to finish to put everything together. I did run into a little bit of a snag where I thought something was broken, but it turns out the instructions address that step later on and I was just getting a little ahead of myself. So my recommendation, if you do get this one, read through the instructions all the way through and then put it together because then you'll know kind of what to expect. The laser itself is really well built. Everything is made from steel, but it's super lightweight. So it, it's sturdy, but I can easily move it across the workshop if need be. Hey, we've got power. They provide you with all the screws and I think all I used was a, an Allen key to put everything together and all of the screw alignments were perfect so when I tightened everything, everything was already square in the end and that was kind of one of my, my main concerns was making sure as I was putting this together that it was going to be square and I didn't run into any issues down the road. But voided all of that, put everything together, super easy, and I was up and running in about an hour. So why don't we talk for a minute or so about the machine itself. So it's very well built. I think it's all metal, aluminum or something. I don't know, really can't really tell the difference. It's pretty light. I was actually working on something else and I, um, I picked it up and I moved it on the ground and I put it back and uh, yeah, it was great. The only thing um, that is a concern for me is this little cord. So everything kind of plugs into this motherboard that's in the front here. Um, it, they do supply you with some zip ties to kind of hold some stuff together with some holes in the actual frame that, you know, hold it all in place. Uh, but there is a one little spot because it does need some slack to go back and forth. Um, but this kind of hangs out over here. So you just gotta be cautious for when you're cutting that it doesn't run into that cord. All the ports are on the front, on the right-hand side, the on switch with um, a port for the rotary engraver, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then it has the USB that goes into your computer. It also is Wi-Fi enabled. They have an app that I'm going to just try out and see how that works. And uh, the only other thing that 
I think is good to know is that with any laser, you, it needs to be focused. So it needs to know where the material lies in order to make sure that the laser is at the, the right point for engraving and cutting. So some of the more expensive uh, options out there have kind of a camera that's built into the hood. So when you flip it down, it senses where the material is and it automatically focuses the laser. But for this one, it's got this little flip out on the right hand side. So you put this little uh, bottle opener looking thing on the, flip it down and then have that touch your material and then just adjust the, the height with the little thumb screw on that side. So once you do that, it is good to go. All that being said, why don't we take a look at the software real quick and then we can start in, engraving and cutting some stuff out. So the software that they have made for the X tool is called LaserBox Basic. And it's just that, it is a basic application to control the laser. You have the ability to draw some shapes if you'd like. You can import images, SVG files, PNGs, it traces it out and puts it on the application. You have the ability to control the speed of the laser, the number of passes, the power of the laser as well. And then you can obviously adjust and scale the images that you put on there too. Um, it does have the ability to cut and engrave based upon the material and it also has set options and default options based upon the material that you're cutting out or engraving built into the application. The only one thing that I have had concerns with is I wish it had two features. The first one being um, with any application you have the ability to send something to the back or bring it up front. So if I have an image and I want to take that, maybe that shape or whatever and send it behind the image that's already on there, um, you can't do it. So there's been a few times where I've drawn something out and then I wanted to move something but I couldn't because I can only select the one that was on top. So having the ability to send something to the back or bring it to the front would be great. And the second thing is that um, it's all in the metric system, all millimeters. Um, I'm from the US so I'm very familiar with uh, inches and it's just um, an extra step that I need to take to be able to know how big something needs to be. So I keep finding myself asking my trusty Google friend over here to convert inches to millimeters just so I can get the right um, measurements within the application. You can also connect this laser with Lightburn, which is a more widely known software out there for laser engravers. It's a fairly new integration that they just launched on their website, but it does have compatibilities. I just haven't personally tested that one out yet. And before I forget, let's talk about safety for a second. Two things. Don't look directly at the laser. They do supply you with these cool green glasses, so keep those on. If uh, you're looking at the laser, it just helps with your eyes and it is a very bright light that's ultimately cutting into material. Which brings me to my second point is that since it is doing that, it's going to be giving off different fumes and it smells bad and you just don't want that in your lungs. So make sure that everything is ventilated. So I'm in a garage, so I'm able to lift up the garage door and then kind of blow a fan so everything pushes out outside. But if you're using this where you don't have that as an option, um, you're gonna need to build some sort of enclose, enclosement enclosure uh, for the laser with a fan and kind of push everything out the window. So I might do that later on. I do have this kind of window over here in my workshop. So that might be a project for another day. So the first material that I worked with was three millimeter thick plywood. And I bought a batch of this specific plywood, basswood, uh, off of Amazon and came in like a 10 pack. And this is what I engraved. I put my logo on it and the image of the logo engraved really nicely and then I also cut it out with the laser as well. So when you're cutting things out you typically put the laser on 100% power and I've tried to cut this out in the past uh, on a different test and it didn't go all the way through on one pass so for this one specifically I did two passes with the laser and it cut it out perfectly. So very pleased with how it works with plywood and I think this one probably took a total of six seven minutes or uh, to engrave and cut out at the same time. So very pleased with how it works with plywood. Basswood specifically, three millimeters thick. So the next thing that I engraved was actually some walnut. I think I set the laser to probably about 80% power and engraved some lettering in it, and it turned out really nice. This is probably the main use uh, that I envision using this laser for as I move forward, is if I make, you know, cheese boards or cutting boards or whatever the case and I want to add some personalization to it, uh, this would probably be my biggest 
use case for this laser personally in my workshop. But yeah, engraved really, really nice on, on walnut and I'm definitely gonna do that again in, this, in the future. So with the laser, they also send you a couple materials to try out, and one of which was this little leather keychain looking thing. And I actually used the mobile app um, to carve this one out. So they had a little pizza icon in there and I just grabbed it from the gallery that they had of pre-built images to engrave. And yeah, this one didn't take very long and it was actually really, really nice quality. So it works really, really well with leather. I haven't tested out cutting into the leather itself, but it says that it can do it. I just haven't tried yet. So next up, I engraved this um, coffee thermos, I guess you wanna say. And it's stainless steel and it actually worked out pretty well. It's a little faint with the engraving on it, the image or the, the lettering. Um, I just used the software to use the, the text tool and just wrote casual builds on it. But um, I set this to, I believe, 100% power and it's a little faint, but it, it looks nice. And with this one, actually, I used the rotary engraving tool. So how that works is you plug this little adapter or add-on to the laser itself and you sit it down and it rotates the cylinder as it's engraving as well. You do have to mark off in the software that you are using it. Um, and yeah, turned out, turned out pretty good. Then I also engraved my water bottle. I did mess up there um, real quick, but this is kind of a color coded metal water bottle, which is nice um, because it just kind of cuts through whatever that coating is on the outside to reveal whatever's on the inside. And I've done this a few times and they came out really, really good. So to kind of summarize everything that I've talked about, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with this laser. I think it's a great laser for the price. Uh, it's really well built. Um, it works pretty quickly. I haven't had too many issues with quality. My only main concern is the software isn't that great and I still have issues trying to update that firmware, but I'm sure that I'll, I'll sort that out soon. Um, and yeah, I just need to find a place to put it. Right now it's just sitting on my workbench and I ultimately need this workbench for a future project. So I think my, my next plan is to kind of build something specific for the laser that also acts as organization for my shop. Um, I do plan on using it a lot in the future, especially for like holiday gifts now. Um, and then also any sort of like personalization that I wanna to add to any gifts in the future. So if I make a serving tray or if I make uh, coasters or cutting boards or cheese boards or anything that you would kind of give to someone um, and you need to engrave it by putting their last name on it, I think this is a great tool for that. I do have my other CNC over there, which I have used in the past for engraving, um, but I like the simplicity of the laser and just how quick it operates and not needing to secure any of the pieces down and dealing with the sawdust. Um, it just, it's probably going to be the one that I turn to when I need to add some personalization to projects. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did um, and you're not already, please subscribe, give it a like, leave a comment down below. I wanna know about your experience with lasers. Do you have this one? Have you used it? Do you have a different one? Um, let's, start a, let's start a chat down there about laser engravers for the workshop. So uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.